Hey guys, thanks for stopping by my channel. My name is John and today we're going to be doing an isometric text tutorial. So hopefully by the end you'll be able to create something that looks like this. Isometric text is super fun to play with and it's kind of trendy right now. So uh, it's definitely something that's useful to add to your tool chest of things that you can do as a designer. I've been having a ton of fun playing around with different color combinations and different orientations of text. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. So as always, if you want to see a super condensed version of this video, for people who might be a little bit more uh, familiar with Adobe Illustrator, you can skip to this timestamp, and I'll have a really condensed version of this tutorial. Alright, let's get into the video. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is obviously open up Adobe Illustrator. Uh, and then from there, what we'll do is create a new document. So for this tutorial, we're going to be doing a 1920 by 1080 document, but obviously you can do this in any size you want. And the way that we're going to be doing this is super scalable. So if you make something that's only like 100 pixels, this method will also work uh, the same way if you do something for 1,000 pixels. So like I said, for this one, we're going to jump into a 1920 by 1080 document. And then once we're in, we're going to zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole artboard. And what I'm going to do is actually create a rectangle over the whole thing so we kind of have a background for our image. From here, what we'll do is just remove the stroke and add a fill. Uh, I think for the background of this, I'm going to do something similar to what I did before and create uh, like a minty minty green. I would recommend that you keep this either light or dark, kind of go to one end of the spectrum so that the text kind of pops off. If you use uh, like a mid-tone color, uh, a lot of times the text is going to end up blending into the background. So we'll do this. If you want to copy this hex code and follow along exactly, feel free to do that. Okay, so now that we have that selected, what we're going to do is actually lock that in place so that we can't bump the background at all. So we'll hit Command-2, and that locks it right in place. If you're on Windows, it's Control-2, and now you can see that we can't select or move the background. From here, what we'll do is just create some text. For this, I'll say uh, maybe YouTube, and then we'll want to scale it up so it's a good size. And you can do this with really any font. What I'm going to do today is Din Condensed Bold, because that's a pretty similar font to what YouTube uses. I would recommend that you go with a bolder font. I think that isometric text works a lot better if you use a bold typeface, but obviously feel free to experiment and do whatever you want to do. Okay, so from here what we'll do is open our transform panel. Uh, if you have a new version of Illustrator, it should just be over here on the right with under the properties. But if it's not there, what you can do is go to your window and slide down to transform. That'll open up the transform panel. So from here, what we're going to want to do is adjust the height value. And you're going to want to make sure that you do not constrain the height and width proportions. Because if you do, then the when you adjust the height, the width will transform with it. So for the height, the value we'll enter is 86.02%. you got to make sure you type the percent symbol. Um, and that'll give you a good ratio. I got this information from Dansky, so thank you for that. Okay, and once you enter that value, it should shrink your type down, uh, squish it a little bit. It looks weird, but I promise this is going to work. So then what you'll do is enter negative 30 degrees for the shear value and 30 degrees for the rotation. So you can see our text is already starting to look pretty isometric. If you want to do this the other way around and have the text kind of pop in the other direction, you can do negative 30 for rotation and positive 30 for the shear. But for this one, we're just going to stick with this. Then we'll center this in the screen. So what we'll do next is actually just copy this text on the top directly below it. So to do that, you can hit Alt, which is the way you can quickly copy text. And we want to make sure that we drag it directly below by holding the Shift key while we're dragging. So once you have it in a good spot, what you're going to want to do is make sure that that lower layer of text is actually behind the top layer that you just created. So to do that, what we can do is hit Command Bracket or control bracket if you are on Windows, and that'll send it behind that top layer. So from here what we can do is mess with the colors. To do this, you're going to need to go to your swatch panels. I have it over here on the right, but if you don't have it over there, you can just go to your window and then click on swatch. Okay, so for this top one, what we're going to do is create a new swatch. I'm going to do this kind of red, which is true to the uh, YouTube brand and maybe like a little bit of orange in there for this top layer, add a little more red. All right, you just gotta kinda play with it until you get something you like. Okay, cool, and that's for our top layer. And then for our lower layer, we'll just select that and do another color. So again, create a new swatch, 
and maybe we'll go with a slightly darker red this time. Okay, that looks pretty good. Again, feel free to copy those values. It's important to make sure that these are global swatches, so that way we can easily edit what color they are later. So from here, what you'll do is actually just select all this text, and we're gonna use the blend tool to kind of create that isometric blend. So to do that, you'll go up to object, and then blend, and select make. You can do this quickly by command shift B. But what we want to do is actually blend that top and bottom layer together. So to do that, what we'll do is go to object, blend, and then blend options. There's a bunch of different options for this. You can do specified steps, specified distance, a um, bunch of different play things you can play with. And make sure you hit preview so you can kind of see what you're doing. Uh, specified distance is kind of an interesting one. You can see it kind of creates these little ridges and bumps. But for this tutorial, we want to make sure that they kind of blend together really smoothly. So we'll go over to the specified steps option. And for this value, uh, usually 50 works pretty good. If your text is giant, you might need more steps than that. But usually 50 is a pretty safe number. So we'll just enter that here. And actually, it does look like we're going to need to enter a higher value. So again, we'll go back to object, blend, blend options. And then we'll up this value to maybe 100 which should smooth everything out pretty well. You can still see that there's some little ridges here, but um, not a big deal. Once you zoom out, you can't really tell. Okay, cool. So like I said earlier, uh, you can really easily edit the colors through the global swatches if you selected those at the beginning. So for me, I think that this kind of doesn't have as much contrast as I wanted it to. So for the, what we're gonna do is actually isolate the top layer and adjust the global swatch. So to do this, what you can do is just double click on the top layer, which will isolate it, and then click on the swatch that you are wanting to adjust. So we'll double click that, and maybe we will add a little bit more yellow into it to kind of brighten it up, maybe even a little bit more blue. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then that will change our top layer. So by making global swatches, it's super easy to rapidly change colors and iterate on your designs. Another fun thing that you can do uh, when you isolate the layers is actually drag this around and you can see that it creates a bunch of different crazy, crazy, crazy shapes. But we wanna keep our standard isometric look, so we're gonna do Command Z and just send that back to where it was before. If you wanna make this taller or shorter though, you can hold shift when you're adjusting it rather than just dragging it around wherever. And you can make it shorter or taller pretty easy. But I like it kinda of right where it was, so like I said, we're just gonna go back to where it was. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much how you make isometric text. It's pretty easy to do in Adobe Illustrator and it's a super fun effect that you can play with and use throughout your designs. It's super trendy right now and it's a fun thing to play with. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching this video. And as always, there's gonna be a super condensed version of this at the end if you feel like just watching that. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one, later. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to need to do obviously is open up Adobe Illustrator. Then usually I like to create a background because it kind of makes like a more cohesive design. From here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is create some type. Once you have that type created, you're gonna open the transform panel and unlink the height and the width if they were linked together. You're gonna make the height 86.02%. Thank you to Dansky for this number. Uh, and then you'll make the shear negative 30 and the rotation positive 30. So if you wanna do this the other direction, you can flip those values making the shear 30 and the rotate negative 30. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is actually duplicate the text. Make sure you hold shift so it stays directly below the other layer of text. And then you can create some global swatches and shift the color around. So from here, what you'll do is select both layers of text, go to object and then blend make. This will blend the two objects together. Then you'll select the two layers of text again. Again, go up to object, blend, and then blend options. From here, you'll select specified steps and enter a value usually around 50 to 100. This will blend the two layers together and create a sort of a gradient between the two layers. And then obviously you can change the color pretty easily by adjusting the global swatches that you created earlier in the video. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you appreciate these condensed tutorials, let me know in the comments because they do take me an extra about half an hour to make. But yeah, that pretty much wraps up the video. Thanks again for watching. If you're interested in more content like this, it would be awesome if you'd like it or leave a comment below. And if you want to join this creative community, definitely subscribe to the channel. All right. Thanks again for watching, guys. Later.